What's going on guys? Astro with Hidden Profits Crypto, a channel focused on bringing the best low cap hidden gems and turning you into a smart risk, high reward investor. Today we're going to be taking a look at what is the difference between a block DAG and blockchain. I know this is a pretty common question as block DAG is kind of a concept that a lot of people aren't familiar with. So I figured that we would take a look at some of the information on the two and kind of compare them and see which one has some advantages uh, over the other or do they both kind of stand at the same level. Uh, without any further Further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into it. So we're going to start off with the main question: What is a block DAG? Now, uh, block DAGs are something that are relatively on the newer side of things when it comes to crypto technology. It's still something that people are working out, um, but there is a lot of questions around it, uh, like how do they differ from blockchains? You know, um, because it is a new concept, uh, does it have advantages over blockchain? Um, and does it have disadvantages? You know, uh, what are we really looking at when it comes to block DAGs? And this is what we're going to find out. So we're going to compare the two, but we're going to start off here with blockchain and kind of explain to you guys, if you don't have a full understanding of what blockchain is, we're going to go over it. So um, if you can start here off by looking at this diagram, you can see that you have blocks inside these blocks are stored with data. These blocks are referring back to the previous block that was created, and this goes all the way back to the Genesis block, and this creates a blockchain. So we can see here, it uses blocks to store transaction data. These blocks are verified by a consensus mechanism like proof of work or proof of stake. Uh, blocks are permanent once mined. So once they're mined, there is no uh, you know, unmining it or getting rid of the block and replacing it with another. Uh, it is permanent. Next block refers to the previous block to make sure that nothing was altered. So these blocks, and you can see here with these arrows, they are referring back to the previous block. And to be more technical, they're referring to the blocks header, um, which basically has all the information of the previous block uh, kind of in a hash. Uh, so it's referring to uh, that previous blocks header to make sure that like, you know, the lineage um, of all the blocks is correct going back to the Genesis block. So uh, only one block at a time. This means that only one block can be mined uh, at once. And there's a reason for this. And we'll get into that in a second. Um, but blockchains are secure, but they're not always fast or scalable. So if we look in the uh, terms of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is very secure. Um, you know, the network is uh, expanded all over the entire world. So it is very hard to perform a attack on Bitcoin. But at the end of the day, Bitcoin is not very fast uh, and it's not very scalable. Just the basic blockchain itself. That doesn't mean that there aren't some layer twos or the lightning network or something that might alter it. Um, but the base blockchain itself is pretty slow uh, and it's pretty much non scalable. Uh, on the layer one. So using the longest chain rule. Now, I'm not going to go super in depth on what the longest chain rule is, uh, but to give a summary when it's picking which block is going to be added to the blockchain. Uh, so say there's two blocks mined at the same time, uh, it's going to pick the block with the heaviest weight or the most amount of work that was put into it. So uh, if the difficulty was higher, say on this block than it was on this block. So say the difficulty was three for this block and it was only one for this block because there was more work put into the block that had a difficulty of three, that block um, would win the longest chain rule and would be added to the blockchain. So um, there's some articles at the end of this presentation. If you guys are interested in doing some of this research on your own, uh, there's an article that kind of explains how the longest chain rule works. I would definitely suggest you guys check that out. Um, and lastly, no orphan blocks. And we're talking in Bitcoin's case, absolutely none. Uh, so the reason behind this, we will get into, um, but you guys might be wondering what is a orphan block? So a orphan block are blocks that are created at the same time as another block but is not accepted as part of the blockchain. So you can see here in this little diagram, you have your Genesis block and then your future blocks. Remember that this is going, um, the arrows are pointing back, but the chain is really going left to right. So this is the newest block and this is the Genesis block. And you can see here that these two blocks right here were mined at the exact same time. So it caused this one to be an orphan uh, and this one was accepted into the blockchain. And then you can see that the rest of the chain uh, was continued on the end of that block. So orphan blocks, uh, these blocks are still valid, but they're just not part of the blockchain. So um, all the transactions and everything that are in it are real transactions, um, but those transactions are just going to get moved from that orphan block into the next block that gets added to the blockchain. And like we said previously, this orphan block was not accepted into the blockchain because it required less work, and that is following the longest chain rule. Now, accelerating the creation size or increasing block size will also increase the orphan block rate. Now, what this orphan block rate is the rate that these 
these orphan blocks are being created so if we take an example like bitcoin where you have a block being created every 10 minutes or you take something like caspa uh, where a blocks are being created every second obviously caspa is going to have way more orphan blocks because there's a block being made every single second and there's going to be way more blocks being mined at the same time whereas on bitcoin side there's only one block per 10 minutes now uh, a high orphan rate actually does equal less security i'm not going to go in super in depth uh, on exactly why um, but i do suggest you guys to do your own research on that if you are interested in these topics now we're going to go back into blockchain so most blockchains limit the block size or the creation rate to minimize the amount of orphan blocks like we said more orphan blocks means less security so the less amount of orphan blocks means the higher amount of security and this is why these blockchains will limit uh, these block sizes and the creation rate so again for using bitcoin as an example uh, it has a block size of one megabyte and creates a new block every 10 minutes so um, this leads to issues uh, with throughput and scalability even though on the security side you know it's a good thing um, because you don't have as many blocks being created um, your transaction speeds and throughput are not as high and it also leads to issues with scalability so um, for bitcoin's example um, you have a 10 minute confirmation time and about three to seven transactions per second um, which is not very fast if we're being honest so now we're going to go ahead and get into a little detail on what a DAG is. Before you understand what a block DAG is, you're going to need to know what a DAG is. So a DAG is a directed acyclic graph, and this is a mathematical concept in graph theory and computer science. Now, again, there's a ton of research you guys can do into DAGs if you would like to, and there will be some links in the works cited at the end of the presentation. So be sure to check that out if you want to look more in depth into it. Um, but we're going to take a look at DAGs in crypto. So a DAG is a data structure. A lot of people might get it confused with this, but it is not a consensus mechanism. It is really just a framework that is used um, and it contains absolutely no blocks. So uh, these circles that you see here, um, these are represented as transactions. These are the vertices that represent transactions. Um, and uh, mining is not required because there are no blocks. Um, you're basically just putting down these transactions as fast as they come. And then they are referring to the previous um, transaction that was seen or that is visible to it. Um, and one of the advantages of this DAG structure is that that is very, very fast and there is no wait times for transactions because they're just being kind of uh, put down as they come. So um, one of the main, main takeaways from DAGs is that they are very, very fast and that is one of their strong suits. So I did put an example for some DAGs down here and that is IOTA and Nano. Um, if you guys remember back in the day um, when Elon Musk had his issue with Bitcoin not being energy efficient, um, Nano actually started started running up because it was a DAG and because they're very energy efficient as well um, because they don't require any mining that means it is a very energy efficient thing but um, we will get into kind of some of the issues that these DAGs can lead into uh, so let's go ahead and move on uh, so now we are going to take a look at we took a look at blockchain we took a look at DAGs we're going to kind of add the two together and now we get a block DAG structure so now you can see here blocks are referencing multiple predecessors using this block DAG framework and you can see here again we're going left to right here uh, so the block on the right is the new block and these are going all the way back to the Genesis block which is this block here on the left but you can see the similarities here you have a similar kind of structure with the blocks in a block chain um, but then you have it all kind of added in in the framework of a block DAG so block DAGs refer to all blocks that are visible to it you can see here this block right here in the middle refers to this block this block and this block and you can see you know something like this block refer to this one and this one so you know kind of take a second to kind of look at this diagram here uh, and you can kind of see how it works um, now they're not referring to blocks that are like seven miles away right so this block isn't referring all the way over to this one or anything like that it has to be within a, like a visibility range of the um, the miner right um, so it also allows for a high orphan block rate and this is obviously why we have so many blocks being put down in parallel so you have like one block here but then you have two and then you have three that were kind of mined at the same time and another three that were mined at the same time uh, so these you know a lot of these would be considered orphan blocks um, but this leads to a higher throughput because um, these blocks are being put down as they're created or at a very lower rate like something like you know one block per second or whatever uh, so can contain very many conflicting transactions and this is the real issue with 
with block DAGs is because um, you know it's not really verifying um, that this transaction may be right and this one may be wrong it's just saying all right take these transactions that we're getting throw them down as fast as possible and add them in um, and that is how you end up with a lot of conflicting transactions and issues with double spends and stuff like that so because of this this means that block dag is not a standalone solution um, you cannot just simply create a block dag and just let it run and the main issue because of that is that you have all these blocks coming down but you have nothing um, that is ordering them and telling them which transaction came before which which transactions valid and which is not and this is where we get into a ordering protocol Protocol such as Spectre or Ghost, um, as it is more known of. Now, this was created by Yonatan Sablinski, and he is a absolute wizard when it comes to DAGs. Check out DAG Labs and all that kind of stuff uh, if you guys are interested more in the technology on that side. Um, but these ordering protocols really, really um, give the block DAG the structure that it needs uh, to run correctly. Because without this, you wouldn't know which transactions are, you know, in what order and yada yada. So uh, I'm not going to go into super in depth. Make sure to stay tuned on the channel i will do an in-depth look at ghost dag in the future um, because it's very interesting to me and i'd really like to know how it actually uh orders all the transactions and things in dag so um i do have one example of a block dag down here and that is caspa i'm not very sure if there's any other block dags um that are even very popular right now if there is uh drop them in the comment i'd be interested to see what they are um but we're gonna move on to our last panel here and that is blockchain versus block dag so this is going to be kind of where we summarize everything Thing and go a little bit more into the reasoning um, why you might want to pick block dag over uh, blockchain so uh, blockchain is time tested and this is one of the biggest things for blockchain that block dag does not have we don't have years and years of experience of watching these block dag uh, projects be ran and make sure that they you know do what they're supposed to and um, you know that there's a lot of issues ironed out we really don't know as a lot of these projects are still very new because the idea of block dags is still a very new technology but again blockchains are very secure but they're still slow and they're not very scalable now if we take cadena uh, and kind of add it into the mix here this is where we see an idea of a blockchain that actually is scalable um, but that's not using the basic longest chain uh, structure that's using you know 20 chains kind of braided together so that's a completely different thing really um, but I think you know there's a lot of blockchains that will find a way um, to kind of solve that trilemma issue and figure out how to scale now the DAGs remember the main takeaway from DAGs is that they allow very very fast transactions this DAG framework used with blocks can create a very fast scalable block DAG um, but again remember you need a proper ordering protocol um, to order the transactions and everything in the way that they need to or else the block DAGs would be pretty much useless so block DAGs with a proper ordering protocol could come ahead in the blockchain 3.0 race so if you guys are wondering what I'm referring to when I'm talking about the blockchain 3.0 race this is really just the idea of the newer uh, wave of blockchains right the newer wave of projects that are figuring out how to solve the trilemma so we have projects like Cadena, Alfium, Caspa all these different blockchains and block DAGs that have kind of figured out their way to deal with speed, security, and scalability without having to sacrifice on one of them. So this is what I'm referring to when I'm talking about blockchain 3.0. This is kind of leaving more of the older blockchain technologies in the dust. Um, and you know, we see uh, projects again like Caspa and future block DAGs. And I think these will really, really show the results um, if block DAG will be more beneficial over blockchain. Now to give my honest opinion, I really do think that block DAGs have a huge potential in being a big part of crypto in the future you know I think blockchain is awesome obviously because I'm in crypto uh, and it's something that's just been around for so long but that doesn't mean that we can't look at newer technologies and newer things that are coming out uh, that could lead to even better uh, you know projects and technologies in the future so you know who knows what might happen with block DAGs maybe they blow up and a bunch of people start really getting into them and a ton of block DAG projects uh, you know start popping off and then who knows what might take the block dag and kind of spin it their own way uh, to turn it into the next new thing you know so that's kind of where I'm coming at from this uh, angle and looking at these newer technologies and really seeing the potential that they have now lastly I'll use all the links that I use to make this video in the description if you guys want to check it out and do some research in your own I really think it's very interesting when you get into this kind of stuff learning about it and I also think that it puts you a step above the rest when it comes to investing into crypto because if people do not know this stuff and they're investing in projects think 
think about how much of a better investor you will be when you know this kind of stuff and you can look at a project that has these kind of things going on and understand it you understand the value that's in that technology because you can see the potential in these things whereas people that don't understand these concepts really won't so that's why we try to focus here on the channel and educating you guys on this kind of stuff so you can make your best choices when it comes to investing in crypto projects all right, guys, it's going to be it for today's video. I hope this video brought you a ton of value. And now you understand the differences between blockchains and block DAGs. Like I said previously, I think that understanding these concepts will really, really make you a better crypto investor. And that's why I try to focus on it here on the channel. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, letting me know what you guys think. Subscribe, tick that notification bell for my future content similar to this. Also, make sure to follow me at hidden underscore crypto on Twitter if you want to follow more in depth with what I have going on. And all my other socials will be in the link tree link down in the description description but that's going to be it for me here today i will see you guys next time and until then peace